Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi, Sorry everyone. about that. Muted. I'm Kilday, Senior Marketing Manager at Alertus Technologies. During this uh, presentation, um, Ryan Oakley, our National Sales Director at Alertus, will discuss the Alertus Emergency Mass Notification with a focus on our text-to-speech technology. Please hold your questions until the end of the webinar, so feel free to type their questions into the chat box during the presentation, and we will address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you after today's session. You can also email marketing at alertus.com if you have any questions following today's webinar. Now I'd like to turn it over to our presenter. Take it away, Ryan. All right. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Uh, actually, that was a great way to start. Uh, you know, it shows some of the challenges with live voice. Uh, if you open up two microphone channels, you get echoes. It doesn't sound very good. Uh, it's live. You don't know what's going to happen. You might get rattled, those kind of things. I mean, all those things, you know, translated in a stressful webinar kickoff to a stressful emergency that's happening on campus. And uh, that really brings us to the topic uh, that we're going to really focus on in the second half of the presentation, which is text-to-speech. Text-to-speech is a great way to ensure that your message gets spoken clearly, effectively, uh, and very smoothly to your, your end users and out over all of your sound systems. Uh, so there's a lot less chance for human error or, or those kind of things. So, uh, so actually that was a, a cool way to start that. Uh, it's some of the challenges that go with live voice. So with this presentation, we're going to go ahead and touch on the Alertus system, a little bit of overview for those of you that are new to Alertus that haven't seen kind of the full solution. Uh, if for those that have, uh, it'll be a little bit of a review. Maybe we'll have a few new things in there that uh, you'll pick up on. And then we'll really jump into the text-to-speech solution and show you how you can utilize all your voice-based assets throughout your facility, on your campus, uh, throughout the world to deliver text-to-speech announcements that are clear, concise, and uh, very intelligible uh, and effective. So from there, We'll hit a, a solution overview, and then we'll also uh, go with a live demo where we'll show you some of the activations, both panic button, but also kind of go into a preset that isolates text-to-speech and visual only, so you can really hear the performance of the text-to-speech for a, uh, a longer message and many different words and those kind of things. So quick overview on Alertus Technologies. We've been around since 2002. We're headquartered in the Baltimore, D.C. area really started out of a tragedy that happened at University of Maryland. The idea came up for the alert beacon to notify. This was way before text, email, mobile alerts, uh, all the different uh, technologies that the Alertus has uh, innovated. And that alert beacon was able to notify individuals very quickly and efficiently over a wired or wireless network. That's really ground to a, uh, a full out, out uh, solution where we're able to notify to all different devices, including text-to-speech sound systems, which we will uh, cover today. Uh, the solution covers large high-occupancy areas, high-occupancy facilities, campuses, and can network and include multiple campuses and locations throughout the country and the world. So just because uh, you've got multiple campuses doesn't mean you have to have a system for each. The Lourdes system can truly scale and support all those. And Alertus has really expanded beyond uh, campus and education to all sectors, including healthcare, military DOD, co corporate and commercial, industrial, all those areas. The, the need for mass notification is there, and we have a solution that fits all those different needs. So you've got an industrial location. We've got a lot of audiovisual notifications. You've got a, uh, a, a space where You've got knowledge workers that are in on PCs, desktop notification, and other modes uh, like the Alert Beacon. So we can really provide a, a system that can cover all those different needs so that you, the, the Alert system is universally uh, useful throughout industries uh, instead of being just an industry-specific solution. So let's jump into kind of the challenges that, that you as emergency manager, security director, uh, executive have when issuing an emergency and notifying your employees when something critical happens on campus. So you have a lot of choices, a lot of technology out there, 
but activation is kind of difficult. Uh, I'm sure you've got fire alarm systems. It's hard to get somebody out to each fire alarm system and make an announcement. If not, it's uh, if you've got a network that was quite an investment, we can leverage that. But not all locations have that because fire alarms might be different vendors, different types. Uh, PA systems the same way. Uh, PA systems traditionally are just in your building. Somebody has to go there with a microphone. Uh, text and email notifications. You know, you have to go to a separate interface for that. Uh, your digital signage. You know, you may have to call marketing communications or corporate communications to have them activate that because the, that sits in that that group. And uh, the the Cisco VoIP phones or other VoIP phones, maybe you have to involve telecommunications to and IT to get those to activate. So uh, you know, you, you've got a lot of these options, but when it comes to really activating them very quickly, you know, it, it takes too long, especially when you get to a uh, a notification that needs to go out within seconds or related to either an active shooter, a tornado event, something like that, where you really need to activate all of these things. Um, a lot of the customers we work with tell us that it takes them a good 20 or 30 minutes if they really focus on activating everything. So they just activate one or two pieces of technology. That leaves a significant number of people that don't message. Alertus brings together all these activation capabilities, makes it easy, consolidates them, so you go to one location, can send that message out within seconds, and hit all of those technology assets and notify uh, the individuals. Even in spaces that you don't have technology, the alert beacon is a great fit because that's a very cost-effective way to, to retrofit your facilities. So really, all your different scenarios, options, Alertus has a way to notify and make it easy to activate your existing assets. So what makes this possible? Well, one, the technology, but also uh, some of the codes and um, uh, that are evolving to allow uh, you to use all these different assets for your emergency notification strategy. So the code that, that you'll come across, uh, if you're in a higher ed institution, Clery Act, uh, this is requiring uh, mass notification for events, and it, it requires a timely notification. Well, timely for uh, you know, a criminal event that happens on campus should be within maybe a, a couple hours of the, of the day, but a, an active shooter timely means seconds. So we're able to help those customers fulfill that requirement, uh, ensuring that they're not fined, and then they also protect their federal funding. Uh, unified facilities criteria, this is a criteria that uh, the DOD adheres to, and we're able to uh, provide compliance within that area. Uh, throughout all these codes we're talking about, ADA accessibility is a huge one. Uh, the fact that the alert system provides audiovisual notification through multiple modes uh, provides compliance with uh, differently abled individuals within your organization make sure that everybody gets that message. Uh, lastly, the one that applies almost universally throughout the, the U.S. and many uh, other areas is uh, the National Fire Alarm Protection Association, NFPA 72. This is uh, the fire alarming code that, that governs your, your buildings, how you do mass notification. That was added to the codes in 2010 and provides a lot of guidance on how to, how to activate, how to uh, send that notification out and the different technologies required for that. Alertus helps you to comply in those areas. In fact, uh, is even uh, the alert beacon is even pictured in in the code book uh, under the hand, handbook section. So, codes have really kind of helped to guide that. But really, what's driving demand is uh, customers need a way to notify all these events that keep occurring. Uh, you know, you can't just sit idly um, there waiting for the codes and for somebody to tell you you have to do this. We know that it's important to notify everybody and notify very, everybody effectively in a, in a critical emergency. But with that, there's challenges. Uh, you know, these are challenges on the right here that a lot of our customers bring to us that we help solve. You know, locations with no way to notify. So maybe you don't have a PA system. You don't have desktops in that area. Um, you don't really have a visual alert. Alertus can uh, help you to retrofit those facilities with things like the Alert Beacon and others uh, to notify. Uh, buildings that aren't staffed 24/7. I mean, if your if your emergency notification process is to have the person at the front desk send that notification or go to, over the speaker system, what if they're not at the front desk? Uh, what if, what are the hours that they're not there? How do we still get a message into the the building? And uh, we've got many different ways to do do that. Special needs individuals again uh, for ADA accessibility compliance. Loud environments. This is for a lot of our manufacturing clients. Uh, clients that have uh, break rooms, uh, cafeterias, those kind of things that have very loud, loud environment where you, a visual alert, scrolling LED marquee would, would be very useful. We're able to support that as well. 
Uh, cell phones not allowed. Uh, a lot of our customers, their first line of notification will be to send a text message and email. Well, you know, there's customers with labs, uh, top secret facilities. Uh, within the uh, healthcare industry, there are certain areas where you can't take a cell phone based upon equipment that's very sensitive, those kind of things. We're able to help you with notification of those areas. And lastly, the one that's really difficult is getting to visitors and contractors. These are people that are on campus for the day, that are in your facility for an hour. You don't necessarily know that they're in your facility. They, they've entered either as a contractor, as a, a visitor for a meeting, but you're still responsible to get those notifications out. How do you notify those? Alertus really focuses on sending that notification to the facility, so no matter who's in the building, they're going to receive the message either through a digital sign-in system, cable TV, LED marquee, a desktop they might be passing by, or an alert beacon. So it really kind of brings together the ability to notify those that are, are, aren't really in your system or you're not sure they're on campus, but just by their being there, we'll get the message. So this kind of brings me to wrapping this all together in the really strong value proposition that Alertus helps our customers with. The first is single point of activation. And by this, it doesn't mean you only have one option to go to activate. You actually have many. You can go in and push a panic button. You can go in and uh, activate it from a desktop. You can log in to our web browser and activate it. We can even do automated notifications. Or, you know, if you're using a text or email service right now, we're integrated with all the major providers so that you can go to one interface, whether it's ours or another, uh, activate that very efficiently, and ensure that all your occupants on campus and your facilities are notified. So with that, then Alertus also integrates to all of your notification assets. So like we started at the beginning, it's very hard to go out and activate all these individual technologies. Well, we've brought all those together so that you activate one location and all those technologies receive the text or audio message to be able to activate. And then lastly, we fill in the gaps. I had mentioned earlier that you know if you've got buildings with no way to notify, um, we come across a lot of customers that say, well, you know, somebody has a bullhorn and they run down the hall and make announcements. If, if that's a few of your buildings, you're not alone because we hear that a lot. A lot. Well, we could very cost effectively retrofit those buildings with a, an alert beacon. So strategically placed alert beacons can then provide the notification out, audio, visual, get people's attention, and you've got a, uh, a great means that you're not dependent on somebody at the front desk to run down the hallway. Suddenly you're able to activate it and activate it with confidence. So that gives you an idea how we really solve a lot of challenges, bring it all together for our customers to, to ensure that a emergency notification is activated very efficiently and accurately. Uh, to bring down a lot of bring together a lot of our activation endpoints, this is really a good a good visual. We've got all the different ways of getting the message in along the bottom, whether it's automated, whether it's from uh, you know a text message or email service provider, or all the way through to our console, our mobile app, and those kind of things. That goes out through the network, either wired or wireless, and goes out to all these different devices, uh, namely the alert beacon, uh, digital signage, cable TV interrupt, te uh, desktop, all extremely popular notification endpoints for us, as well as what we're really going to focus on is the uh, text-to-speech capabilities to outdoor notification, to your indoor public address systems, and also based upon NFPA uh, changes back in 2010, we can also now use the PA system for the fire alarm system. All of these sound systems are very easy to interface using our innovative text-to-speech and allows you to provide a text-to-speech announcement over those. So really a huge win when you already have those in place. Now, uh, you know, those sound systems are pretty expensive. If they're not in place, we also have other modes to cost-effectively serve. But the ones that are in place, we really want to use those because they've been bought, paid for, you're maintaining those, and uh, are an excellent way to cover a, a building or a facility. Uh, other modes of notification include LED marquees for scrolling visual. A lot of our uh, DOD customers, the UFC requires having those over over sign, over doors, entryways, those kind of things. VoIP phone notification. VoIP phones over the last 10, 12 years have really become prolific within organizations. We're able to use a notification to go directly to those VoIP phones to display the message not only visual, but also have a tone or an announcement accompany that. And then lastly, we're able to also reach out to individuals through their smartphones, doing a uh, push to all those individuals to notify them as part of your organization. So instead of using a text message service provider, a, uh, 
a email, those kind of things. We can actually go directly to a mobile app with, within your end user phone. So there aren't any uses, charges, those kind of things as part of the, uh, the Alertis solution and the options you have to notify. So we bring all this together, make it very easy to notify and activate, as well as uh, through panic buttons. Uh, we're able to activate a panic button, either a USB based next to your desktop, a uh, panic wall mount panic button as you pictured up there, or it could be a, uh, a uh, soft panic button that's activated through your PC as well. So you know, a lot of different ways not only to notify but also activate our system very quickly and efficiently. So from there I like to shift gears and really dive into the text-to-speech technology and what we're able to provide. Uh, you know, we started this, there was a good example of why live voice is kind of a challenge sometimes. Uh, you know, a lot of times the message either doesn't come through clearly, there's technical difficulties, those kind of things. So text-to-speech really provides a great way to, to notify. Uh, the first one there, you know, because of those things, the industry started with pre-recorded messages. Well, pre-recorded messages really fall short of really expectations on getting additional information out to users that's specific to the emergency. You can only plan so many emergencies, you know, weather event, uh, intruder, lockdown, you know, all clear. You know, but what if it's slightly different? Not all emergencies are the same. There's going to be a very generic message. So pre determined preset messages kind of fall short. The uh, text-to-speech technologies overcomes those uh, challenges with very intelligible live voice. So you're able to customize that message, which isn't available to preset. You're able to send that out and ensure the quality of that message is delivered, and then make sure that it's exactly the way you want it to be spoken to your, your facility occupants. We do this through a, uh, a module that actually integrates with your hardware-based voice systems that receives the message and then converts that to text-to-speech locally. So we're not uh, streaming text-to-speech over your network. Those that are in IT realize that you know if you're streaming that kind of thing, the you know it uses up a lot of bandwidth. We're just sending the text out to our, our device, and that's doing all the the conversion local to the PA system, the fire system, or our outdoor giant voice HPA high-powered speaker arrays, those kind of things. So uh, the technology is really very um, very reliable. Uh, it's hardened. It's it's not as dependent on uh, a lot of uh, you know network blips and those kind of things. So we're able to integrate those directly with your sound systems through the the audio system. Very similar to going and plugging a microphone into each of the systems. So you know we get the question. You know how do we how do we go ahead and uh, interface these with all these different systems? Whether it's a Bogan PA, a Biamp, a uh, Honeywell Fire System, uh, Siemens. You know all these questions come up. Uh, if you're able to pick up a microphone, plug a microphone in, you're able to connect our, our text-to-speech and, and make those automated alerting notification endpoints. So there's really uh, a very strong notification capability by using those assets. It's very cost-effective, as we mentioned. You know, you've already uh, put that infrastructure in place. It's been installed as part of a capital uh, purchase, potentially. Let's go ahead and use that to make the most of it. Uh, the notification coverage provides a, a wide area of coverage. You, you think about how far uh, your speaker systems go within your buildings. They go to almost every corner. Uh, the corners that they don't go, an alert beacon is a great option, but the ones that they do, let's go ahead and use that system. It's also integrated with all of the different alerting endpoints. So not only would you hear a uh, notification either outside, indoors, but you'd also see a desktop pop up, and you'll see this in our demonstration. Uh, you can coordinate all these notification modes along with text-to-speech to your PA systems to ensure full notification. It's very reliable. We're able to uh, you know, eliminate any kind of single points of failure, and if any of the technologies do have any troubles arriving or they arrive a little bit later, you've got so many different modes that we're notifying to be able to ensure that, that the message is delivered. And then lastly, we mentioned uh, ADA accessibility. Uh, text-to-speech provides the audio version of ability of making that announcement. And then we'll also you'll see in our demo we have plenty of visual to go along with that so that you're actually you're getting a visual notification text that's matching the exact audio that's going out over your sound systems. Uh, so a, a few new features uh, for those that have implemented our text-to-speech. We've added a couple additional relays to also trigger uh, other parts of your system, whether it's uh, additional strobes to uh, provide visual, whether it's a preset announcement that then is followed by text-to-speech, 
whether you know some of your systems might need that extra contact closure to turn it on before the announcements. So we've really got this, the, the hardware optimized so that it works with any and all of your sound systems. Uh, the, uh, we've also added the analog phone paging system capability to our text-to-speech as well. So if you don't have one of these newer uh, VoIP systems that allows you to go through the network to the phones, you probably have a way to dial an extension and make an announcement to those phones over the PA system or over the, uh, the, the speaker systems, the, the speaker systems as part of that phones. If you've got that capability, we can also do a text-to-speech announcement. So uh, we can really focus that in. And if you've got to put in uh, a uh, code to be able to access that, so it's password or PIN protected, we can also uh, you know, program that into our system so that the, the message can be securely delivered to phone systems uh, like that to be able to make that announcement. So you know, we've even gone even beyond your, your standard indoor, outdoor speakers, fire alarm systems. We've even gone into some of your uh, phone systems that we can uh, do a text-to-speech announcement to as well. Uh, one of our more popular is interfacing with the fire alarm, and after 2010, the fire alarm codes opened up the, the sound systems associated with these fire alarm systems to be able to use those. The theory being, you know, the fire alarm system, they don't want this to be a very daunting, you know, unused system. They want it to be something that people are comfortable coming up to, making an announcement, activating, because in an emergency, you need to be comfortable. Also, they realize that, you know, you make a huge announcement investment in these systems. They're speakers that are redundant, all home run wired back. They're monitored. They're uh, battery backup. So we, we should use these for non-fire emergencies as well, as well as daily usage. So uh, you know the, the text-to-speech integrates very, full, very uh, seamlessly with all the different fire alarm manufacturers out there and provides uh, voice notification over those fire alarm systems. So think of which systems within your campus, your facility, your buildings, have the, the fire alarm notification capability to be able to do voice. And let's, uh, let's talk about how we can bring that in as part of your notification strategy. So you're not dependent on somebody getting the right message, running to that panel, being comfortable using it, and then getting the message correct when they, when they speak that live. Uh, so uh, it's a great asset, but we can optimize that for your notification strategy. Public address systems, very similar. Uh, any of the PA systems out there, uh, I mentioned previously, like Bogan, Biamp, uh, you know, all those that are, are, are out there, uh, we're able to interface with those, extend your uh, voice capabilities into those buildings, uh, and not have to have somebody at that building make the announcement. We'll just go ahead and include that within our notification strategy, and that will be spoken over the, uh, the PA system in the building. The other one's uh, outdoor giant voice. Uh, this is an area that Alertus can help you whether you know, you have these speakers already. We can interface with existing systems that you've purchased, as well as we've got an outdoor giant voice, or otherwise known as high-powered speaker array system, that we can provide to provide an end-to-end -end outdoor voice system as well. And this really allows us to go ahead and make a text-to-speech announcement. We can proceed that with a tone. So if there's a, a tone to get people's attention that you want to use that, we can use that. And then we also optimize the text-to-speech for outdoor giant voice. Anybody that's on the call that's ever gotten on one of these speaker systems, uh, think about trying to speak over the systems you've heard at um, the fairgrounds where there's echoing, you can hear multiple systems. You know, you have to talk very slowly over a giant voice system just so that the sound has time to travel and it's not talking over itself or echoing off of buildings and reverberating. So you really have to be trained to, to make a text-to-speech, or a, sorry, an announcement over uh, the, the system. With text-to-speech, we're able to slow our system down, add the appropriate pauses, and optimize it so that it sounds perfect outdoors. So we're not dependent on potential uh, mistakes by operators, those kind of things. We're actually able to control that. We're able to deliver that message the appropriate number of times and make sure that it is uh, heard by all that are outdoors. We're really maximizing the capability of the equipment. So that's really one of the keys to text-to-speech uh, within outdoor as well is that it maximizes the equipment, whether you have it today or if you uh, need a solution, we can help you end-to-end -end with an outdoor high-powered speaker array system. I'd also like to touch on one that's uh, gaining significantly in popularity. A number of uh, security organizations rely on land mobile radios to be able to communicate. 
Well, the, the first people you want to also hear that announcement are the people carrying your radios. So we could break in, make that announcement. You can specify the number of times the announcement's made over your radio, and then we can open up that channel for the first responders and uh, security administrators to go ahead and uh, manage the situation. So this allows us to do a text-to-speech announcement directly into the, uh, the land mobile radio system, get the, the message to those that need it first, and, and then allow them to react and, and begin to uh, assemble a response to that message. So uh, you know you can decide to target just a message to your radio users. You can use you can target the, the message broadly and include your radio users. So there's a lot of options with uh, integrating text to speech with your your uh, land mobile radio system. So at this point, you know I've talked about a lot of these capabilities. Uh, I'd like to demonstrate a number of them, and we're going to go ahead and uh, and bring up our user interface as well as the uh, demo room here at our uh, corporate headquarters. This demo room includes a lot of our, uh, our capabilities uh, between desktop, digital signage, cable TV, fire alarm integration, uh, VoIP phone, just about everything you can think of. And we're going to activate actually this first one via panic button. So this would show, say you've got an emergency, a, a active shooter, intruder lockdown, something to that effect will show a, a quick, efficient way to activate. And from there, we'll log in, you'll see the message, and then we'll issue an all clear out of the preset so that you can see how, how easy this can be managed for multiple devices, locations, and, and, and users. So we're going to start with a panic button. This one is uh, an immediate emergency. We'll go ahead and press that. It's detected, and, and you'll see everything starting to uh, activate. We've got desktops, beacons, digital signage. You'll hear our VoIP phone. I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge, and then also uh, the text to speech. Device here. name North Lobby initiated a panic button activation at 12:28 and 18 seconds. Device is located at security desk. Device name North Lobby initiated a panic button activation at 12:28 and 18 seconds. Uh, and uh, from there, now that we've got the message out, and that was uh, definitely at all points, you could hear everything was at uh, full blast. From there, we want to make sure that uh, everybody's notified that the uh, emergency is over to carry on. So we've got an ability to do a uh, preset activation. I'm going to go ahead and select the all clear. You also see up in the, uh, the on the screen there's a uh, button that if you wanted to be able to provide certain individuals a uh, panic button to do the all clear. They could also activate that. Um, additionally, I could activate that here, but also we've got the ability to go ahead and uh, come down to our desktop. We've got an all clear. Uh, we can activate this for specific users that you give this capability. You can act allow them to activate uh, different notifications. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and activate the all clear actually from our desktop activator. So you'll see the all clear comes out. Uh, this one isn't quite as loud and as noxious. Uh, You'll see the alert beacons are green instead of the red, and the messages are going out, and you'll also hear the text-to-speech announcement. All clear. The emergency condition is over. Return to normal activities. So I went ahead and uh, canceled that out. The devices will start turning off, and the, uh, the all clear will have been delivered. The uh, all clear. The yeah, you've been hearing a lot of the text to speech in conjunction with a lot of the other uh, audio notifications. I created a, a preset for text to speech and visual only, and you'll see uh, generally uh, an emergency message wouldn't be this loud or this long, but I wanted to put together a message so you could really hear a lot of the the text to speech capabilities. You'll hear a number of uh, words pronounced uh, and, and run through uh, to give you a good idea of of the capabilities of the text-to-speech system. I'm going to activate this and you'll see visual alerts. So what we've got going is there's the text message. We'll have the beacons going off. They're, uh, they're going to be uh, green. They won't have any um, siren tones going associated with them. I'm going to do a desktop alert, digital signage and cable TV. The, the desktop alert you'll see is a little bit different this time. I, I configured it so that it would be a uh, scrolling alert. So you'll see a scrolling alert across the uh, 
the, the top of the screen whenever I send this. And then you'll hear the uh, text-to-speech announcement clearly uh, because it's been isolated. So you'll see we've got the, uh, the scrolling across the top as an end user. Uh, you can't quite see it, but you'll see a yellow line across the top for the, uh, the uh, desktop that's on our uh, backdrop that's visual. And then uh, the digital signage, LED marquee, and uh, cable TV activation. The, the text-to-speech uh, will be uh, this making is a test. Out. This is only a test. Had this been an actual emergency, the custom text-to-speech announcement you entered would be spoken over any and all sound systems on campus. This includes indoor speaker systems, fire alarm voice systems, and outdoor giant voice. This is a test. This is only a test. Had this been an actual emergency, the custom text-to-speech announcement you entered would be spoken over any and all systems. Fire alarm. All right. So that gives you an idea of uh, what the text-to-speech sounds like, the capabilities of that. And that could be really, uh, as we mentioned, interfaced into all of your different systems uh, throughout campus, throughout your uh, facilities and buildings, uh, no matter whether you're you're local to activate it or across the country, you can activate a, an announcement over those sound systems uh, remotely. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump back into our uh, our slides here, and uh, this concludes the demonstration portion. I'll uh, turn it back over to uh, Caroline for uh, for our Q and A session. Thanks, Ryan. What are, um, I, I feel like I learned a lot in this webinar. Um, I hope you did as well. We do have a couple of questions that have come through. Feel free to go ahead and send those uh, to us if you'd like now. And again, if you think of a question after this webinar, just feel free to email us at marketing at alertus.com and we will uh, follow up with you as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, so the first question asks, we have multiple fire alarms across our facility. How will this technology integrate with all of the different types of fire alarms we have? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, we, we run into this often where, you know, you, you may have, a, depending on when a building was built, a, a, a Honeywell fire system, uh, uh, EST Edwards Tyco, a, uh, you know, a, a Siemens system, or, or a mismatch of those, or different parts of the country, different uh, standards. We're able to interface with the, the sound system of all the different manufacturers and be able to deliver that message very clearly and effectively. Uh, so really, it, um, it solves that challenge of, you know, a lot of these fire alarm systems are very proprietary. It solves the challenge of interoperating with all the different uh, versions and manufacturers of fire alarms that you have on your, on your campus to be able to provide a unified message very clearly and concisely over all those systems. Great. Thanks, Ryan. The next question asks, what are your top five delivery methods? Oh, that's a good question. Top five delivery methods. I'd say uh, number one would be our, our desktop notification. Uh, the desktop is a very quick, easy win. Uh, it's very easy to, to push it out centrally. can be installed you know, silently overnight. So that's really a huge quick win because you could have hundreds if not thousands of desktops throughout campuses. Uh, the second one uh, that is the, the most popular I'd say would be our alert beacon. This is something that you could you know, buy one or two or a hundred or a thousand and, and implement those uh, throughout your facilities and provide notification capabilities. I'd say uh, the next one would be our, our cable TV and digital signage capabilities depending on which displays you have around. Uh, this is a great way to activate. We can interface with all your different technologies. Uh, the next, uh, definitely text-to-speech. Uh, that has uh, significant coverage capabilities, especially if your facilities have these fire alarm systems with PAs or uh, uh, public address systems. So that's uh, four. And I'd say five is kind of a tie between our, our mobile app capabilities and our uh, Cisco VoIP notification. So uh, both uh, kind of more uh, traditional mobile endpoint or uh, desktop-based panic button or uh, notification modes. Uh, but I'd say those are probably our top five notification uh, options. Great. Thanks, Ryan. Our next question asks, we have different pronunciations for uh, street names, building names on campus. 
how does the Texas Speech Technology handle unique naming conventions? Oh, excellent. This is uh, an area where we uh, excel because we're able to control and uh, customize the text to speech library. So if uh, you've got a, a street name, say it's uh, an American Indian pronunciation or uh, you know a, a local pronunciation that's different based upon you know the way everybody says it and knows it. Well, we can send you ahead of time the uh, the pronunciation through text to speech and. You can actually tweak them phonetically, coach us, and we can uh, load those into the text-to-speech that's uh, shipped to each of the devices that you're sending to, to each of your regions that pronounce that specifically. So you can make sure that a, a building name or a street name that everybody pronounces a certain way matches in the text-to-speech notification so that people aren't confused or don't have to try to figure out in their mind, well, it said this, but I think they mean this because that's the way we actually say that, but I can see how a text-to-speech would announce it that way. We can optimize put those in that so that every load you get, every text-to-speech device uh, continues to have those um, optimized names, words, uh, sayings, those kind of things. So very good question there. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Our next question asks, we're aware that you have the capability to them through third-party emergency notification systems. Is there a way to input notifications using the alertus panic button or keypad? in a certain location and push that notification through the third-party system. Absolutely. Uh, we do this quite often. Uh, a lot of the third-party text email notification uh, companies don't have a panic button capability. So our panic button can then push the message out up to your uh, service provider and distribute it based upon what groups or, uh, or scenarios that you have preset in there. That can be done a couple different ways. Uh, we've developed to a number of the major third-party uh, service providers, so it might be a direct integration with them, or it could be uh, industry standard common alerting protocol, RSS feed. You know, we've really fine-tuned and developed a number of these uh, methods for integrating with these third-party services so that, yeah, you can go and push a panic button, it'll do a lockdown, and automatically send out a text message or email to the groups you desire with that same text of that message. So. It's really a great way to take full use of all the services and capabilities you have on campus uh, related to emergency notification and alert us. Great. Thank you, Ryan. The next question asks, um, for the text to speech technology, can you filter certain words? Um, I'm assuming the question is regarding you know, entering particular words maybe that we don't want over the system, um, if there's kind of a filtering system um, available. Hmm. Good question. Uh, generally, you're able to enter in um, any any words or um, any words that you would you desire. We we don't have a way of uh, locking out specific words, and we haven't implemented something like that a lot of times because we may be getting um, the message either from your uh, your third party uh, service provider for text or message or email with an integration, or we may be getting it through uh, no weather alerts or something like that. So we haven't um, put any kind of filters or controls on what words could go in. I, I could I could see potentially there you wouldn't want any uh, anybody having fun with uh, words they shouldn't be entering, uh, cuss words and those kind of things. But uh, we really trust that you know the, the person activating is going to choose their words very carefully, activate them appropriately, and we wouldn't have to put those controls on there. Um, if you do have somebody that abuses the system, we do have a uh, uh, history and reports that will tell you exactly who logged in, where they logged in from, what their IP address was, what time, how they selected the message, what what parameters, where they sent it. So, you know, if somebody did abuse the system and use words that they shouldn't, um, you could definitely track them down and have that conversation. So, I'm not sure what the application is. Uh, we'd love to talk to you more about that. Um, we're always looking for enhancements from our customers and suggestions. Great. Thank you, Ryan. The next question is asking about the alert system in general. Um, what's, what are the typical equipment or software um, that should kind of make up your, your base system um, to launch a mass notification system? That's great. Uh, yeah, it brings us to kind of fundamentally how do you, how do you set up a basic system. Uh, one is the, the software licensing that, that the software runs on a, a server, virtual server, somewhere in your network so you have access to it. That allows you to log in via the web browser, over the internet, all those different things. So you've got the base software. Next is uh, our enhanced notification service and support. 
this is your uh, yearly support, advanced licensing. Uh, it adds a lot of the capabilities like mobile app, digital signage, cable TV interface, software, a lot of those kind of things uh, to provide not only the support training, but also uh, some of those licensing. And then lastly, uh, you can build your system out with the different hardware devices, the text-to-speech device, alert beacons, uh, panic buttons, uh, those kind of things. So really think of it as software, uh, service support and implementation, and then your hardware devices. And you can really do as many or as little hardware devices, desktops, um, you know, integrations as, as you want from there. Yeah, so it's really customizable to what your specific facility organization really needs. Yeah, there's a, a few basic requirements uh, with software and support, but once from there you can go ahead and grow it from a small system all the way up to a large enterprise system. Uh, it really grows with our customers. Great. Thanks, Ryan. Our next question is asking kind of about security and protections that are in place um, to help keep the, you know, the, the notification system secure and how that works with the text-to-speech technology. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great question there. Where there's a, a huge emphasis on security and uh, you know securing the system. So if you were to go in and uh, log in through the uh, web browser, you need a username and password. That that password's unique to the individual that you've given that to. Uh, you should choose obviously a very uh, a strong password so that uh, somebody else couldn't find that and activate that. Also, many of our customers will uh, keep our system since it's installed on software. Keep their system behind their firewall. So that uh, precludes the outside, um, outside internet, outside uh, threats from potentially accessing that. They would actually have to hack into your network and then know that you have Alertus and find it from there. Uh, beyond that, it's, it's also uh, encrypted and there's a uh, SSL connection for those that are logging in. So even if they knew you had Alertus and found that, that, that login page, they would also they also would have troubles getting any of the passwords or any of that kind of thing because that's encrypted. Also, for our desktop notification communication to and from our system to desktops, uh, done through certificates. All of the communication out to the text to speech via our alert beacon is AES encrypted. So we've got many many layers of, of security to ensure that somebody from the outside world couldn't get into the middle of your system and and uh, activate that. As evidenced, uh, we have a number of uh, authority operates, ATOs, IACAP package uh, for the DOD. So we've had uh, outside organizations really go through and ensure that the security is there. Lastly, you know, one of our early markets was the college uh, campus space. Uh, just think of how many uh, college hackers would love to just take over the desktop solution and have a message go out. Uh, we have not had any issues with uh, anybody hacking through our system and, and sending out nefarious messages. Uh, the, uh, so, so we've had a lot of really good success with securing the system. We take that very uh, seriously because uh, an inadvertent emergency message could be just as dangerous as one that needs to go out for a real emergency. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Um, that covers all the questions that have been submitted so far. Um, if anybody else has a question, please go ahead and send those to us right now. We do have a few minutes left. Um, and again, if you think of something after the webinar, just go ahead and email it to us and we'll get right back to you. Um, we'll give it just a little bit of time here um, for any final questions. We do have new webinars that are being scheduled regularly, so please check out um, alertus.com slash webinars to see what's um, coming up next. Um, that'll be refreshed um, regularly as we schedule those out over the coming months. Um, it doesn't seem like we have any other questions that are coming through today, so we'll give everybody 15 minutes back for their lunch break or a little free time. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it, and we hope to see you at an upcoming webinar. Thank you so much.